I, I have another question since since it's a very very um, current topic uh, regarding an uh, issue in the Georgia and what's going on in Russia. What is your opinion and what would be your solution to, to calm things down and, and find to some compromise and peaceful talks or something uh, among the like uh, maybe Ron Paul's message or, or how do you feel about this well, person? Well, let me, let me go back to, to uh, 1989 through 92 for a second and tell you that when the Soviet Union broke apart, we made some serious mistakes with uh, Russia, what became the Russian Federation, the old Soviet Union. Uh, President Reagan made uh, promises to Russia, as did uh, the first President Bush and President Clinton. Those promises were not kept, and those promises were essentially that uh, if these breakaway uh, states like Georgia, the Ukraine, the Baltic nations, Belarus and others were, were given freedom from Russian domination that we would not attempt to bring them into NATO and to arm them. We, we have not kept that promise and we made uh, serious mistakes with Russia in that we had a real chance to achieve a lasting peace with them. The Russians withdrew 80 armored divisions from Western Europe plus their nuclear missiles. Those were the reasons, those armored divisions were the reason the American military uh, remained in Europe, in Germany, uh, where my brother fought in World War II all these years. Now, 60 years later, they're still there. And they were there uh, uh, ostensibly to keep uh, the Russian army out of Europe. And once that threat was removed, those troops should have been removed. But they weren't. Now, um, here we are, all these, these uh, independent countries surrounding Russia, like Georgia, uh, uh, George has been a part of Russian uh, influence for a thousand years. Uh, what made us think that we could bring missiles into Georgia, uh, which we, we say are pointed at Iraq, uh, why would we think they would, they would not find that uh, difficult? Uh, we have military advisors there. There were a thousand Blackwater uh, contract military there. Uh, they're still there, and, a, and an American brigade is on its way there. Why, why wouldn't we think the Russians would be uh, aggravated with that? That would disturb me if it were happening. If Russian missiles and Russian troops were on the Mexican border, I would be nervous about it. Uh, and the missiles we're putting in Poland is an unnecessary provocation. Uh, the Polish people admit that they're aimed at the Soviet Union. But uh, they're not, uh, these Patriot batteries are not even effective against uh, the, the new Russian cruise missiles. That's not what they're designed for. So to me, it just looks like a provocation that's unnecessary and shouldn't happen. So the answer to what I would do would be to withdraw those missiles, pull our military out of those uh, uh, republics that line uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, and pay attention to our own affairs, take care of our own business. Right now, we've got all we can handle in the problems that confront this nation without trying to solve those of other people's. The Russian battle fleet is on its way to Venezuela right now. They're undoubtedly going to work out some military relationship with Venezuela. I mean, the Russians are just doing that to, to, to show us that they don't appreciate what we did. And it's a, it's a chance. They sense weakness on our part because we're totally committed in Iraq and Afghanistan. We have no reserves left. And they want to show us that we can bluster and we can talk, but we can't back it up. Uh, so to me, it seems like a time for peace. Yeah, they're very good. Now, I mean, our news media distorts the message because uh, it was uh, my understanding that they were claiming that the, the, the Russians started first. I mean, you, you, you know the truth, correct? Well, that's what uh, the news media says. You know, you would think this guy, uh, Mikhail uh, Saakashvili, uh, is the second coming of John Kennedy or something when you see him interviewed on... Uh, on, on television, but apparently he, uh, with full encouragement of the United States, launched an unprovoked invasion of this breakaway uh, territory, Ossetia, uh, uh, which was occupied primarily by uh, Orthodox Christians. Many of those people were killed. I've seen figures of up to 2,000. Uh, I don't know if they're accurate or not, but many thousand more fled into Russia. It was kind of a form of uh, ethnic cleansing, I guess. Uh, and they seem to think that all those troops massed on the border, those Russian troops, clearly visible on satellite, uh, were not going to do anything about it, but they were wrong. Uh, and, and apparently
apparently the Russians tried to show these people uh, their vision of the New World Order might not be quite as accurate as they think it is. Correct. Now, I mean, you, you know that uh, Senator Obama and uh, Senator McCain, uh, their messages, both of their messages, no, either one of them express any apology. Like Serbia publicly, uh, uh, Serbia publicly uh, 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 sent to Russia grief and sorrow and sadness feeling for those innocent people suffering. Uh, what What's happening with the our end? I mean, how come America doesn't see that this is sad? Well, because the, the news media is controlled by the people who do it. Uh, and uh, you can't be elected president of the United States unless you're willing to, to, to start unprovoked wars. That's one of the most uh, important aspects of being elected to any federal office. You have to be a uh, uh, a cold warrior and who's willing to, to turn our children into hot warriors uh, while he directs them from 10,000 miles away. And uh, are you familiar with the situation in Kosovo and how did you feel on that one, 1999? When yes, I, I'm familiar with it and, and it's, you know, it, it's another illegal war that had nothing to do with us. Uh, it was none of our business. And, uh, you know, as we say here in America, there's, there's no problem that this country faces that some government program can't make worse. Uh, so uh, the same is true of war. We, we try to solve our problems with the military, and we always just make it worse. That's what war does. It creates uh, madness, chaos, death, and misery. Uh, it doesn't help anything. And how do we as a Constitution Party can prevent and stop those unconstitutional, unlawful, and immoral wars? Well, we can't unless we're elected. You know, if the people want uh, relief from this situation, they've got to be willing to support us. We're, we're out here telling the American people, uh, you know, this is a crude way to put it, but if you want relief from it, then, then put your money where your mouth is because uh, the media will not uh, allow us to have national media exposure, and we have no money to buy it. So if the American people will support us financially, we can get our message out and who knows what might happen. Is the Constitution Party, in your opinion, going to work together with Ron Paul and his message? Well, we're trying to work uh, with Dr. Paul as much as we can. He, he doesn't feel like he's at liberty to endorse uh, any candidates because he would be reduced uh, to the bottom layer in the House of Representatives if he endorsed somebody outside the Republican Party. He would lose his uh, uh, committee appointments and things of that nature. So. Dr. Paul has been very supportive of us. He's, uh, he hasn't endorsed us, but he's spoken very highly of Chuck. Uh, he was gracious to have us to his office in Washington and things of that nature. Uh, he let Chuck speak at his uh, Freedom Rally on the 4th of July, so he, he's been very supportive. And that's very good. And we still have to go with this message. And uh, since uh, all those uh, people donated a lot of money for uh, Ron Paul, and Sometimes people are disappointed because uh, it looks like a globalist's money is bigger than ours. So how can we do otherwise besides money to move the grass movements uh, and maybe recruit like on a local level some? Well, the globalist money is bigger than ours because they have all the money. Uh, they can just create it anytime they want to. But what can we do? Well, the American people still have a window. Uh, of opportunity to elect somebody who is opposed to, to the new world order and the globalist agenda. And uh, if they will just give us a chance to, to lead the government, uh, then we would pledge, as the Founding Fathers did, our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor uh, in order to do that. It looks like the people all over the world, I received emails from the Spain, from uh, Greece, and from uh, Russia also, and from Serbia that uh, they're all concerned and they're all like us very supportive with Ron Paul message so and and which is the same same message constitutional Republican constitution plat constitution platform uh, based on what we all stand for how do we uh, tell those people that it's not our it's it's not on our hands and we would do more if we could well I would say that to those people that it's very important that America survive.